Welcome to Network with Pride. We are so thrilled to have you all join us for another edition of our new program that helps students to stay engaged and build connections. Uh, we are hoping that you continue to join us each week as we invite professionals from a variety of industries to share career advice, industry information, how you can make yourself more competitive during this challenging job market. This is a program that we recently introduced in uh, partnership with the Graduate Business Career Relations. So uh, thank you for coming and please check our calendar for the future events. The Career Center is still open and we are active meeting with students during phone appointments and Zoom appointments, so we invite you to make that appointment through Connect. As I mentioned, the Networking Pride program is in full swing, and tonight, the Graduate Business Career Relations is having another Network with Pride event with Altice, and that takes place actually at 5 p.m., so that's a breaking news update. That's going to be at 5 p.m., not 6 p.m., and you can check Handshake for the link. We have more scheduled. So uh, we have a special uh, Network with Pride event with LinkedIn happening next Wednesday. So you wanna mark your calendars for that. And that will be um, coming up on um, May 6th at 12.15. And every uh, Wednesday, the Career Center has workshop Wednesdays with a variety of uh, career topics. So you can check Handshake for all of those different events and connect on our social channels. We often promote our events on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Graduate Business Career Relations does the same. So you can follow their Instagram and connect on LinkedIn. Today, we are so excited. You heard from the music tax man. We have Grant Thornton here and Jonathan Daniel is the professional who we're connecting with today and he is a senior associate in audit. Um, he's from Long Island, but is now living in Forest Hills and he not only is active in um, his team, we're working on audits for hedge funds and private equity funds and management companies, but Jonathan also coordinates the basketball team for Grant Thornton. So that's exciting. We'd love to hear a little bit about that getting outside and staying active um, and he was a finance intern throughout college so it'll be interesting to hear Jonathan share some information about he how he transitioned from college to career and advice that he has for young professionals so without further ado I'd like to welcome Jonathan to network with pride um, I just want to mention before we get going that the chat feature is opened and available in case you have questions while Jonathan speaks with us today and we'll make sure to save time at the end for him to engage and answer some of your questions. Um, and just to note, we also have Jenna Hall from Campus Recruiting at Grant Thornton, who will be here to answer any recruitment questions that you have. So Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and if you could tell us a little bit about your career path and your current role at Grant Thornton. Thank you so much, and thank you, Jenna, for uh, for inviting us to join and participate in this really amazing program. And you know, really kudos to all you guys who are joining right now. Uh, you know, I know during these challenging times, it's uh, you know not the most ideal way that you would think about you know in terms of networking and recruitment things of that nature. But you know, really props to you guys for joining and for making the best of this situation. And, you know, we're, we're kind of getting used to this new virtual reality that has become our, uh, not only our work lives, but obviously for you students, uh, your, your, your student lives as well. And uh, I'm sure while there have been many challenges on your end, uh, you know, I know that there's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of these, you know, hopefully skills that have been, you guys have been working on over these last couple of months that might be able to stick with you, you know, as you, as you move forward. And, you know, again, as, as Jenna had mentioned, I'm here to talk about, you know, my transition from college to my career where I am right now, uh, as well as just really the industry and really work in general. And I, I'd love it to, you know, for you guys to have questions, active participation, as Jenna mentioned, the chat is open and we will have time at the end, you know, for questions and we'll try to keep this as engaging as possible. And hopefully it could be as, uh, you know, really as informative as possible for you guys to learn, you know, a little bit about my personal story, but I hopefully, you know, we'll be able to carry that for you guys as well as uh, you guys all join or embark on your journeys from going from college to your careers also. So just to take a little bit of a step back 
um, where I come from. I went to Queens College, actually, as you heard and you saw in the bio, uh, you know, not too far from you guys. I grew up on Long Island, so I'm familiar with Hofstra University. I've been there, actually, played basketball there. As Jenna mentioned, I do run the uh, Grant Thornton basketball team. I played basketball in middle school and high school, you know, all four years of high school, and we actually have played games in Hofstra. In Hofstra. So I have been there, and I, uh, I know the campus well. And, uh, you know, so really beautiful and, you know, hopefully get out to meet you guys there in person, you know, at some point when all this kind of uh, settles down. So looking forward to that. But yes, so I went to Queens College and I actually embarked on my Grant Thornton journey when I was in when I was in Queens College. I had my internship actually when I was a rising senior uh, in college. And that kind of what propelled me to start my career with Grant Thornton. I had started, it was my first full-time job outside after school. And now I've been there for just about five years now. So I've seen the transition. I know the, the path that you guys are looking to embark on, as we said right now. And I'll just talk, talk a little bit just to kind of uh, create a little bit of an agenda for you guys, you know, as I go through my talk. I'll talk a little bit about my position, where my role is right now, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more. I want to spend a little bit more time specifically on how I chose my career and really more of the steps that I've taken, you know, as I've started my professional career, as I've made that shift from becoming a student and maybe working a little bit part-time to transitioning and becoming a full-time employee for Grant Thornton. So just about my position right now, for those who are unfamiliar with Grant Thornton, we are a professional accounting, public accounting firm, and we offer services in audit, tax, and advisory. So those are our three branches, and I'm not sure what all of your backgrounds are, if any of you guys are business majors or understand the public accounting world, but those three service lines are pretty broad in nature. You know, people might think of, uh, you know, typical accountants based on the music that was playing as we entered as, you know, the tax man. And I actually don't work in the tax department. I uh, know basics about tax, but probably just as much as, you know, some of you guys might know as well. So my department that I specialize in is audit. And audit, just to give you a bit of a background of to what my position is, is if you look at, for example, let's say a public company, let's say a publicly traded company, I'll take Apple, for example. So if you're an investor in Apple, you have the ability to look at Apple's quarterly financial reporting, which you know right now is a big time that a lot of companies are reporting earnings. We just came out of a first quarter, which most companies did not look too good, unfortunately, for many, some of you who might be shareholders in some of those companies, including myself. And so I feel that pain as well with you. But nevertheless, we have the ability to see those companies' financial state open and you flip the cover, you will generally see an audited opinion. And an opinion is a public accounting firm, such as one like a, that is Grant Thornton, that provides their opinion on the rest of the financial statements that you will see. So the balance sheet and so on and so forth without getting too much into the nitty gritty. So the, job, the, the role of our public accounting firm that what I'm involved with is providing our opinion on the reasonableness of of companies such as, let's say, Apple's, their financial statements. Maybe they have assets and liabilities, they have equity, they have their own investments, perhaps. So we perform our audit. We are not IRS auditors. We don't come in looking for things to ding companies on. We actually work in tandem, in team, with our clients who hire us to perform the audit for them on behalf of their shareholders. So that's just a bit of an overview. Again, I don't want to bore you on jargon of accounting or audit or anything like that. I just want to give you a bit of a background on kind of what my role looks like, really more of that, you know, the day-to-day, -day, what my overall big picture is. But just now, as we move more into the, you know, and again, I'm, I'm also happy to field more specifics on, you know, accounting related questions. If someone has an interest, we can leave that for the end. But I want to more focus taking a step back on when I was in college, when I was in your position that you guys find yourselves in right now, and what that transition was like for me. And, you know, there's this question that most of us don't really start thinking until either if, you know, some might say it's too late, or I really don't think that's true. But what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to be? What kind of role do you see yourself working in? And this is really the million dollar question that you might be thinking about when you're in high school, when you're already in college. And 
my answer is generally speaking, most of the students that I talk to, most of my friends specifically, you really don't know. And it's really impossible to know. And I was, you know, as I'm sure many of you feel, I didn't know myself. Even until sometimes, you know, I was once talking to uh, someone who was, I think, well into their 40s and had been uh, already established in a company for, you know, 20 plus years. And I was with a group of people and someone said, oh, when did you know that this is what you wanted to be? And his response was, I still don't know. Right. And I thought it was an interesting answer. It always stuck with me that sometimes you really just don't know. And I think that's OK. I think it's OK to not be 100 percent certain that this is the role that I want to do. I know I want to be. And I think a lot of the reason as to why that's an okay answer is because it's uncertain. It's uncertain as to what your day-to-day -day or defined roles are going to look like in, you know, a specific, a specific role and a specific job or even a specific career path. So I think what's most important, because ultimately you need to make a decision of what you want to do, is I think you need to ask yourself the question of what are your strengths? What are you good at? And maybe what is it that you want to do? Not necessarily what industry do you want to work in, not necessarily what kind of client services industry do you want to work in, but what day to day, what soft skills maybe do you have? What kind of career path do you see yourself embarking on based on you and yourself? And I think if you kind of stay true to that question, I really believe this, that you can be good at any job you choose. And so it's important to choose a job or choose a career that fits you, that maybe you know certain people that you could look up to and see yourself saying, I could see myself becoming like so-and-so one day. He works in such and such a position. And maybe right now in this current state, in this current time, you can't see yourself, you know, 10, 20 years out. But I think it's okay to kind of think along those lines. So for me, I'll talk about my personal experience. How did I kind of choose the accounting path? And, you know, some might want to say, I actually have a, my father and my grandfather are both accountants, both CPAs. So you would think the decision was made easy. However, I'll let you know that I have three older brothers, none of which went down the accounting path. So really, it was kind of like, okay, I could do whatever I wanted. So how did I end up in accounting? And for me, you know, I started taking, I knew I wanted to do something business oriented. I knew I wanted to do something along those lines. And it kind of became, when I became good at the accounting part, good at the numbers part, I saw that I had the technical skills that were ready for it. But when it comes to any business, technical skills are only part of it. But business is more about networking. It's more about teamwork. It's more about personality. It's more beyond. And what I saw and what I was told to me was that accounting really became the backbone to a lot of businesses that others run. And so even if I wanted to run my own business someday, I thought that accounting would be a really great backbone and starting point to get me to where that was. So that kind of led me along the accounting path. But again, it's okay to feel that you don't know. Maybe you're still unsure. But again, stick to that starting point. The starting point might be, what are my skills? What are my passions? And be patient. Don't get ahead of yourself, right? Ultimately, the reality is, even if it's your first job, un you know, the, sometimes the unforgiving reality is that you're not going to stay maybe at that same position for even more than a couple of years. Speaking for myself, I am luck lucky and blessed to have been in my role for now already five plus years. But it's not always, you're not always gonna pick a job that's gonna suit you for long term. But for me, that was important. It was important to me when I was going through my journey to find a company, to find a firm within my industry once I was able to narrow my decision down to accounting. It was important for me to find what is a firm that I can grow with and I can maybe stay with for more than the one or two years that just to get a starting point. And when it came to certain companies, I looked for really invaluables. I looked for things that really spoke to me and culture was super important. And when I visited other accounting firms, and again, I'm speaking to those, I'm, I'm using my own personal accounting experience as an example, but anytime you, 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 you pick an industry and you, you should take a look around, see other companies, see you know, what they have to offer and see who speaks to you the best. I think that's the best way to narrow down your decision in terms of how to make that you know, well thought out places where you wanna start your career. And for me, what I saw from a Grant Thornton was you know, unlike some of the other places that I had visited and I had offers from multiple companies was that they really spoke to that culture. They really cared, they really invested in their people and they provided you with the ability to grow. And I think what's important when you're starting your career is that you find opportunities for growth. You find opportunities for yourself to not just get in, learn a couple of things and move on. That you find opportunities that you can grow within the firm, you could grow within the company, within the industry, 
and use and build those skills that you might now take with you and translate them over to maybe a future role as well. And so I think it's important that when you make the initial decision of, you know, career, first place of where you kind of want to start working, that you look at those kind of those intangibles. You look at those, you know, those, how do they treat their people? How do they provide? What's their flexibility like? What's their work-life balance? What are the, maybe speak to some people who are there already that have been there for a number of years, perhaps, and see what their day-to-days look like. And I think it's that, that's super important when you, when you're making that decision. So I want to talk about, you know, for the next, uh, for the next few minutes about how I made my transition. Again, I spoke about what I do my day to day. I gave you a little bit about how when I was making that thought process, the decision process of what kind of career industry to go by, what I was thinking about when I was making that selection of what kind of company I do want to work for. But now, okay, you have your job. Or maybe some of you guys already, you know, maybe you have jobs lined up. Maybe you already have internships. Maybe you are already working, you know. So what's it like? How do you move on from the college life to the full-time working life? And it's, it's difficult. I think, you know, I know personally speaking back, you know, a number of years ago when I made that jump and there's some nerves involved. There's a little bit of anxiety of the unknown. You know, you're used to kind of going from, you know, a college defined, you know, you have your year, which is defined by semesters. And it's an interesting thing to think about, right? Where, you know, you have, you've, you grew up and you've always gone to school where summer, nice two month vacation, right? And it doesn't work that way when you get to the work world. It doesn't work that way where you just kind of get this, you know, two month vacation, so to speak. And so it, it's kind of, it, it's a little overwhelming, like, oh, I'm starting now, but there's really kind of no end in sight. But what you really kind of come to learn is that it's not true. There are many goals along the way. There are many periods along the way. There's from in our industry specifically, we have projects, we have client engagements, we have deadlines. And in every industry, in every work, you're going to have a specific deadline, goals that are going to be met. And I think it's important to look at each individual goal that you have, each individual season that you have, a client engagement, a project that you're working on as a mini semester, so to speak, as a mini opportunity to really say, okay, I'm entering into this phase of my year, of my work, and I'm going to make the best of it. Similar to where you have a midterm and then a final. You have a beginning, a planning phase. You have a middle, you know, where you have, you know, you have to reassess where you're at. And then you have a final, you have the deliverable on every project. And so if you kind of keep those skills that hopefully you guys have attained over these last couple of years or a few years, or I know this is a graduate program, you know, so you have experience in that and that really kind of translates. And you need to really believe in yourself that you got to the point where you are for a reason. And one of the things that I like to tell students when I'm on campus who have these similar types of questions who are a little bit overwhelmed as to, you know, am I really ready for the job? And the really thing, the thing that I say that was told to me by some mentors that I've looked at is you have to believe in yourself. You want to believe that you're at a job, you earned to get that job. You probably went through an interview process, you might have done an internship, you might have, you know, done a project that clearly showed that you stood out for whatever reason that gave you that job particularly, that gave you the ability to now walk and step foot in that door. So believe in yourself. You were there for a reason. The company, the interviewers, whoever saw you, saw something in you to know that you have the ability to succeed. And when you have those thoughts in mind, when you know that you can succeed, that something is will go a long way. Confidence will go a long way as you begin. There is uh, something that I heard a while back, but it stuck with me. This comes from Charlie Harari. Charlie Harari is a public speaker. He's a motivational speaker. He's an author. I encourage his books are amazing. And I've looked at him as someone that I really have gotten a lot of career advice and really life advice from someone who's gone through multiple, you know, industries and has a great way of connecting with people. And he really narrowed it down to when he was asked the question of, I'm starting a new job. And what is it that I should be working on? What is it that I want to, you know, really think about where, what's going to stick with me as I move into this role? What should I think about? And he narrowed it down to three things. And I want to share with you those three things that he had said. He said, number one is listening. Listening is so important. If you listen from depth, 
obtain an understanding, if you're sitting in a boardroom or in a conference room as a, you know, a new hire where you have people who are established, who have more experience than you, there's so much to learn from those who have already been in that position that you are in that moment in time. And there's so much to take with you and ask questions, ask questions while you, and listen to their responses. Don't just think that I'm gonna walk in there and say, I have all the answers. I've, I have a master's degree. I have an undergraduate degree. I know what I need to know. Listen, be humble, understand that you're young, you're inexperienced and there's a lot to learn and a lot to grow. Number one is listening. Number two is volunteer for different types of work. In every job, in every industry, in every project that you're gonna be put on, you're not just gonna be narrowed down to saying, hey, this is your job, you're gonna do it the same, time, the same thing over and over again for the rest of your career. There's gonna be opportunities for different types of work. And volunteer, make yourself known, especially if you're in a bigger company in a bigger environment where it might kind of be hard to navigate through, make yourself known that you wanna, re you wanna be responsible and you wanna take upon yourself to learn new opportunities. And this works for every type of job. You really, you'll, you wanna create the, the vastest type of, of professional that you, can, that you can be, right? You wanna be your own advocate for yourself. You wanna grow your own personal brand. And the more experiences that you have, the more client projects, the more engagement that you have with other types of teams and industries, the more well-rounded that you'll become. And finally, number three, is set yourself an expectation and try to exceed those expectations. Before you begin a project, before you begin a particular job, you embark on a particular role, you wanna set yourself an expectation. What is the typical expectation of someone into this role? You might wanna ask your supervisor or someone giving you a project. And you wanna to try to ask yourself, how can I exceed these expectations? What is expected of me? And how can I go a little bit of above and beyond? If someone says you wanna do a project and you kind of think about a way that maybe I can add some value, try it, go for it. And I think that's the way that you can really exceed your own expectations to move forward with and, and really grow yourself and your own personal brand. So those three things, listening, volunteering for extra work or not necessarily extra work, but maybe just different types of projects and, and doing things and setting expectations and goals to try to exceed those expectations. And I think it's with those three things that will really be the key to your success. And if I could just kind of close this part of the segment, by giving, you know, my, my own personal just take as, as to my, you know, where I find myself in my career and some success, successes that I've had is I always try to recommend students to or employees that are new to find a mentor. Try to find someone who you can look up to, to see, to kind of create, you always want to create your own path. But ask questions if you're struggling with something. Find a mentor. Find someone who can help you along the way. Find someone who could maybe give you some more exciting opportunities. As, as was mentioned, I love basketball. I have already spoken about it. And I lead the Grant Thornton basketball team. And that was because the person that I was talking to that I saw, he led the basketball team. And he subsequently handed it over to me. And it was just a small example. But it's happened a lot with other opportunities for myself being personable, opening up, expressing your interests, what your desires are, and ultimately it'll all come back. And I really believe that if you keep those in mind, just a couple of points, and I'd love to kind of open it up to questions. If you guys have any specifics about what's worked for me or any more that I can touch upon, I'd love to you know, open it up for questions as well. Thank you, Jonathan. That's been really, really helpful. And uh, like we, uh, mentioned in the beginning, the chat is open should you want to type your questions in and uh, for the group so we can um, uh, facilitate that. But I, I know I have one and, and Jonathan, you spoke a little bit in the beginning about really knowing your skill set and your strengths and how you can contribute on the job in you know whatever industry you're interested in. And I thought since both you and Jenna are here today that you could speak specifically about what are some of the skill sets that will help a student be competitive for opportunities at Grant Thornton? Sure, yeah, I'd love to uh, you know, address that and then I'll, I'd love to turn it over to Jenna as well after. And, and this is, it's funny, I think on an interview, and it's a great interview question, and a lot of students and candidates I've actually seen in just conducting some interviews ask this question. And what I say is, the willingness to grow and the willingness to learn. Someone coming straight out of college 
we're not expecting the the incoming hire to know all that what it takes the technical skills to perform and to do so well on a job it, it's it's impossible in any industry it, it, a lot of what we do you you gain it by learning on the job experience and that's really you know what we have but the idea of learning on the job is most important and if you come into a job with the expectation to learn and to grow and the openness to learn and to grow you will succeed again if you believe in yourself you'll know that you can you can really accomplish and no one's going to give someone something that they're not able to do no one's going to give a project that's beyond their expectation and so if you just are open to learning and you ask the right questions and it's really an attitude you know if i see an intern or you know a new hire that comes and says you could really tell on their face from the first moment you're talking to them the attitude of excitement of real enthusiasm to learn what is it that you're doing how can i improve how can i help that's someone who's going to go a long way. Someone who's going to come and say, you know, with a sour face and this is a burden. That's not necessarily what I would be looking for in an ideal candidate or an ideal someone that I want to work with. Jenna, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I think you did hit the nail on the head. I was definitely going to say attitude. I think for me, when I'm looking for candidates and at least for the interns and first year associates that we've seen the most successful, it's really about having that attitude and also putting in that effort. Um, so there are times where you'll, you'll come in, and especially during busy season, um, I mean, Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot to learn, and so you're, we're not just going to dump all of this work on you, you know, but I think the effort that you put in to go the extra mile and ask for the work and ask to learn and take that initiative yourself um, is something that sets the good apart from the great. Um, but I think, Jonathan, exactly what you said, that we're not going to expect you to come in and know everything that you're you know, supposed to do within the first month or two or even six months of the job. So it's really about putting in that effort and having a positive attitude and just looking to contribute where you can and, and also just try to have fun with it. I mean, we're, we're a fun firm. We're a fun group of people. You know, we really like to enjoy our time with each other. Um, and we're not going to lie to you about, you know, the demands and the hard work of public accounting. But I think if you come in with that positive attitude, you know, it's going to be better for everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, something just to kind of piggyback what Jenna just mentioned is I've seen more in these last two months, which is actually tends to be our busiest, most, most demanding from a time consuming perspective months of the year. The amount of fun and the amount of, you know, excitement that teams have had with each other, even just during this time period where everyone's working from home. It's really been it's really telling on you know you give people the opportunity to be creative you know to think outside the box to you know once a week myself i work on a team day to day with seven or eight different people and once a week we have we host virtual happy hours just with our team you know and each week is a different activity you know so just the last couple of weeks we've done trivia games we've done scavenger hunts we've done and, and every week someone else comes up with a different opportunity. and it's like you know even if these kind of seem like ah, I don't I wouldn't want to do this on my typical Thursday evening or Friday afternoon it, it kind of brings a light to the fact that you're interacting and you're able to have fun and become friends and really create these relationships with the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day. that fun element I think is it really goes a long way and it create and it makes the work especially during long hours you know everyone gets busy at certain points in time and you respect each other and you could have a good time while doing it, it makes it all that much more enjoyable when you're doing the work. Great. Well, you know, that support is, is so needed, especially now. And um, I, I don't see too many questions from the students right now. So I, I know we're getting to the point to wrap things up, but I'm curious, Jenna or Jonathan, if you could share information for a current student who's looking at opportunities, whether it's internship or full time, what does recruitment look like now and what steps should they take in order to be considered for opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the number one thing I would stress is it's never too early to engage with us to start looking at opportunities for us. I mean, we have opportunities, depending on the time of year, anywhere from freshman to senior and in the graduate school as well. Um, so right now we're in between recruiting seasons, but in the fall we'll start picking it up again. So I would say um, starting in August, we'll start posting positions on Handshake. We hope to be back on campus, um, but we'll just kind of see how that goes. But regardless, we'll be recruiting for internships for audit tax and advisory for 2021, whether you want to intern in the winter um, or the summer. 
And we also have our summer leadership program, which we typically recruit for in the springtime. So starting in January, ending around March or April. Um, and our summer leadership program is an early ID program. So that would be an opportunity for freshmen and sophomores and juniors to get um, involved and engaged with us and um, potentially have their first step into the firm. Um, you know, and as Johnny said, he started as an intern and now has been working full time as it been five years. Yeah. Yeah, so really, I mean, the internships really, um, they set you up for success in your associate role, and they also really help to get you into Grant Thornton really early. Um, so just look out for our postings on Handshake come probably August, um, and then definitely come to our events, whether they're virtual or hopefully in person, um, to meet us and, and ask any questions. But in the meantime, I definitely suggest connecting with both Johnny and I on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we post sometimes positions there. So I would just, you know, use that um, to keep updated with us and definitely feel free to email either of us with questions and just to stay connected in between these recruiting seasons. Well, thank you so much for taking time today to join our Network with Pride event. And we look forward to our continuing partnership with Grant Thornton. So thank you everyone for joining us and I wish everyone good health and stay connected. So Absolutely. thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank Take you so much. Thank you. Take care everyone.